the goal remains the same the reader needs to feel that what you have written is the best version of what it could have been from an engineer to go into publishing it requires a little bit of you know hoop skip and jump hello everyone i'm shiduta samanta from team how i got the job and today i'll be talking to shreya punj she is the commissioning editor at uh, penguin with an experience of more than 6 years in writing and editing she has come a lot and now she's uh, sharing her knowledge on instagram through reels and create other creative methods so hello shreya and it, we are so glad to have you on board today and we we and my team has uh, selected all the questions we have jotted down all the questions for today's interview and i'll be having my notes with me so that i don't screw anything up so thank you hi shubhita thank you so much for having me here it's a pleasure and i can't wait for us to begin this conversation with all your notes intact in yeah. fact having notes is always a good way to not to screw anything up in life yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah sure so first i uh, let's get started sure let's get started so could you please share your insights on content writing and editing as a career why did you seek a uh, career in content writing and editing field okay so i am actually an engineer my graduated in instrumentation and control from ip university and it is during my fourth year where i it dawned on me that this isn't something i want to pursue as a career so i like did a little bit of brain mapping and i saw which skills of mind do i want to capitalize on as a career and which can fetch me a salary at the end of the month right it is at during that time when i was analyzing my own skill set when i realized that my english language skills were something i could get paid for and i love reading and i love uh, books a lot so i knew that i wanted to get into publishing at the end of it so from an engineer to go into publishing it requires a little bit of you know hoop skip and jump and i mapped out my steps to then land into publishing i didn't do content writing what i did is a course in journalism and mass comm so i worked as a health journalist for mint which is hindustan times is a business newspaper i worked there for about 8 months i got the creative experience i needed and by creative i don't mean that the job itself is very creative it really isn't it's just that you need to be a part of the industry which is separated from engineering basically and then i applied for penguin and harper collins got selected and here i am that's great actually matlab from uh, engineering to writing career and skipping the careers like you have changed your career lines and that is actually a very brave move for now nowadays actually most of the people they actually go for engineering or you know architecture so they are the dominating yeah. career uh, choices that we you choose right uh, right, uh, right now so Absolutely. how has uh, right, content writing flourished as a career choice in the market what are your thoughts about it the content i think content is one thing which will never not be needed there's a there's a misconception that you know as we move on to screens and we consume more video content our attention spans are decreasing and thus we are not going to be reading much that's not true what's become even more important now is to be able to write and communicate so effectively that within that small attention span you're able to capture your audience's attention and get them to either learn what you want or do what you want or in fact even buy what you want so content writing is extremely important it will always be as long as human beings communicate with each other we need someone who specialized in the art of communication as a job and uh, i think it's a it's a flourishing field especially now that most content is moving online i mean it's not moving on it's already moved online so there's countless avenues there's countless people who need different kinds of content writing and you should pick out something which you're a naturally good at and b which you can then um, you know scale up in terms of the kind of skills you acquire that's always very important to stay relevant 
So true. So my third question is, what was your first job and what are the nuggets from the job you did that helped you to get where you are today? So like I said, my first job actually started with an internship. Um, during the, it was a requirement of the course that we intern at a newspaper for a few months. And on my very second day, I was offered the job. And the job was that of a health journalist. Now, it was a tough job because it requires you to have contacts. It requires you to go on the field and report. It requires you to also keep a tab on, you know, the pharma industry, uh, the various cabinet shuffles that happen because, you know, you're in Delhi and you, and it was a business newspaper. So I needed to think not just from the perspective of health policies that are rolled out by the government, but also what the pharma industry in India has been doing. So that job taught me how to network, how to maintain contacts, because that's very essential. It's, you need to be able to meet new people and then be remembered by them, either to call on a favor or perhaps ask for help whenever needed. And uh, it also taught me how to work alongside a team while still maintaining my need for not being a team player as such. So while you work in a bureau, you have other, other reporters who you know, report to a single uh, editor-in-chief, but your essential job is solo. And I realized that that's the environment I love working in, where I'm left alone to my own devices to do my thing. There are team meetings that happen from brainstorming, for opinions, for just discussing larger issues. But the work itself is very independent of the team. And uh, that helped me in realizing that publishing and editing books was the best fit for me because there too, what we have is we have a team of editors, but you're essentially working on one project and you're doing it solo, especially when you're copy editing. Or even now, um, I am a part of an excellent team, but when I have to publish new books, it's a very, it's a very singular job in terms of ideation, etc. cetera. And uh, that's what... I mean, of course, and then the networking that I learned at a newspaper and journalists network like nobody's business. That was a key skill that I picked up because otherwise I was very introverted and I rarely enjoy extremely social situations for a long period of time. So my first boss also helped me overcome that, you know, hesitancy in uh -huh. being comfortable with the crowd. Yeah. So be being an introvert and networking is like, you're taking parallel roads and it's really hard. Absolutely. Exactly. So how did you prepare for interview and what advice do you want to give other writers to keep in mind while prepping for a job interview? I think the first advice is to not think of it as an all stakes event. The moment in your head becomes the one conversation that will define the rest of your life. It's too much pressure. It's just, it's, it's putting a lot on stake and you have to force yourself to be at your best behavior, your most confident self. Whereas in normal situations, maybe you're even better than that. So the first thing is to tell your brain that, hey, this is just one of the many conversations I will go on to have in life. And it's thus imperative that you relax. Now your brain can't relax unless you have prepared. Because... Uh, I, I personally think that if I'm not prepared for what I'm going to do, I become anxious and I start to lose confidence. So it's, again, it's very important to relax yourself by having prepared adequately for the job. What that means is obviously, you know, the job's description. So go through that, make sure you've understood each of those points and ask yourself whether you're a good fit for most of them. If you're not, say there's one or two points where you think you have no use, uh, be honest with yourself, but then research about those things so that you have a vague sense of what might be required of you under those categories. And third, of course, the organization you're going in, please read about it, please. It's the age of social media right now. So you'll know who's interviewing you, go and see their social profiles. So that, you know, in that small talk zone where they ask you, how you're doing, how you're doing this and that, you're able to converse with them on topics they might be interested in casting a very favorable impression on the person who's taking the interview because they know that you've put in that amount of work to understand them understand the organization etc so 
uh, I think being well prepared in a social context is as important as being prepared in a just the technical part of things. So of course they'll ask you how do you know grammar? Do you what are, what all have you written? And you might be able to speak about that quite eloquently because that's work. But when it comes to just making a favorable impression in terms of you know going beyond what's the weather like or oh how is it Delhi? Me, how much smog is and Bombay is so crowded. <laughs> Go beyond that, you know. Uh, if they've read a book or if they've tweeted about a movie or if they've liked a certain kind of joke. maybe try and slip that in the conversation you will sound so much more suave and so much more at ease correct you have to make a connection with your interviewer that yeah. is the key point and so hold down like this yeah okay so what are the lessons you learned from the jobs that you couldn't get uh this might sound like a brand but there is no job that i applied for that i didn't get um oh that's all the jobs Yeah. Lucky. <laughs> no, again, it's not luck. It's just very good preparation, and also knowing which jobs not to apply for because you know you'll not be any good there. So the key is to never overestimate your skills, but also to never underestimate yourself. Just be self-aware. Know that there's something which you can learn on the job, while there are others which are completely outside your area of interest or maybe. you know they are above your pay grade basically you just don't understand those concepts so it's very important to know that and once you do a you will go prepared you'll go confidently you'll go with basic expectations from your own self in terms of how you're going to perform and uh, i mean there is obviously luck that's got to play a role in this but mostly i think it's just a combination of these factors good research and staying calm and not shooting for the sky unless you have a parachute or a rocket with you so tell us about your work experience with penguin mint and harper collins i would honestly love to hear this because it's like one of the most big big uh, publishing houses that we have heard of till now and i want to know ki how the uh, work atmosphere is there and uh, how the how your colleagues are so you know supportive so tell us about it so publishing is a rather small industry actually especially in india uh we all seem to know each other we have a very similar ecosystem so when i first entered i was obviously quite scared because it's, it's one thing to love books and love reading it's an entirely different thing to be able to walk into a room with an opinion on a book uh and getting paid for it so the first few months were full of being scared about with my colleagues because they seemed just so much more experienced and so elegant and so well read and so articulate in their opinions but slowly and steadily with their support and with the friendships i built and of course my my first boss in publishing he chef's kiss amazing he was an amazing mentor uh with all that kindness uh and also sometimes a little bit of strictness to you know pull pull you off when you've made a mistake that really groomed me to fall in love with the industry and both at harper and penguin i mean a penguin of course i've joined much later in life so i was already familiar with publishing i already knew most people but uh books are magical and uh, offices that create those books are also magical uh, we go through a period of stress we often have fires to put out but when you have a good leader and you have a supportive team things become so much more easier and you know work then just remains work it doesn't take yeah. over your entire life yeah. so that's also another benefit of working in a publishing house everybody is so well read that uh, they have empathy they know the basics of you know how to talk to people they understand respecting each other they understand being kind to work each other you don't have to worry about saying hey i'm having a bad mental health day and the repercussions it might have we're all aware we all read the same kinds of books and uh the intelligence average intelligence level is quite high so you know i can walk up to my colleague and say you know what i'm having a very bad phase and i think i need some time off and it will not be they understand you and they understand me perfectly as i would if they were coming to me which also happened 
and it's also a very creatively charged workspace. So conversations are of a certain kind, of a certain level. We're discussing ideas. We're not discussing petty politics. We're discussing actual politics, perhaps. And just knowing that we're all geared towards the same thing, which is producing beautiful, amazing new books makes for a very happy environment. That's great, actually. <laughs> I never knew that inside me there are so many new, new things. And this is a new thing that we learned in sites of Penguin and Harper Collins. So moving on, the process of getting a book published is more uh, often termed to be quite lengthy and hectic. How much yeah. of its sense is more of a myth and what are the practical aspects that one must keep in mind if they are trying to get a book published or anything published? So I only speak about book publishing because that's my forte. Um, getting a book published is tough business, yes. While there are many traditional publishers, the standards that are set for accepting manuscripts are very high especially in fields like fiction, where we have so many writers that uh, the volume of proposals becomes too much for a team of, say, five, ten editors to humanly go through in a very quick manner. So right from acceptance of the proposal to publishing the manuscript, it can take quite a fair bit of time. And that's because our schedules for publishing are set way in advance. So, for example, I already know what books I'll be publishing in 22 and 23. So if I'm acquiring something new, either I have the space for it in my calendar, in my publishing calendar, or I time it in a manner where it makes maximum impact. Because books also take time to research and write. And fiction is a different ballgame, but say for nonfiction, the author needs to have done considerable amount of research, then there's writing, and then there's the process of editing it, editing it once more, proofreading it, typesetting it, etc. So once your contract is signed, it takes anywhere between six months to two years, depending on what your publisher has told you. When you if you are interested in writing a book someday, the most important thing to keep in mind is that you have a certain degree of self-awareness there as well. You must be able to evaluate your own idea, your own writing, keeping in mind all the things that are already published, keeping in mind the competition in the genre you're writing in, so that you can assess realistically what are the chances of your writing getting published. While I fully support people who are ambitious and who have big dreams, you live in a harsh world, you live in a world of cutthroat competition. So either you're exceptional or you are so good at one thing and you know how to spin it in a way where it becomes exceptional. So that self-awareness is imperative. If you're an average writer, if your writing is not connecting with people, the chances of a big publishing house picking you up are slim. Unless, of course, you have a huge following and the publishing house knows that this book will sell just on the basis of how many people love this person. So those are factors you need to keep in mind. And uh, one advice I give to all my friends who hope to write is that would you pay for your own writing? Take a step back, read what you've written again and ask yourself, if this were a book, would I pay 300 rupees if I saw it in a bookshop? If the answer is a maybe or a no, then it's not good enough. You should at least be able to impress your own self. So those are the things I would ask you to keep in mind. So, uh, methods and techniques of writing and editing are changing very fast currently. How do you keep yourself updated with the drill? And what would your advice be for the budding writers to keep up with the drill? Writing and editing don't change. You have the same words. You have the same rules of grammar. Rules of grammar haven't changed. The way you break them is how what's changed. And editing at its core is just one task, which is no matter what you're given, you try to improve it and make it the best possible version of itself. So that principle never changes. Editing may change based on the medium you're editing for. So, but then the writing will all obviously be in tune with how it needs to be edited. So if I'm looking at a book, I don't think the way we were editing 10 years ago 
has changed other than the fact that 10 years ago maybe you were editing on paper and now i edit only on my laptop we hardly ever print things but has it changed in the way i perceive text and i see the value in it no has it changed in the way i'm looking for accuracy for uh, a lack of plagiarism for checking that the opinions are balanced and are not hurting sentiments needlessly uh, or being controversial for without no facts those are things i still need to check to make sure that my reader when they pick up that book gets an informed nuanced opinion and or they get the best kind of story which is error free which is whether there there are no plot holes where which is intriguing exciting makes them feel something so those things haven't changed at all if you're talking about web now if you're writing for say an app like inshot obviously you need to be brutal with how, the kind of words you use you have to be frugal in the way you write and the editor needs to be brutal in slashing things off but again the goal remains the same the reader needs to feel that what you have written is the best version of what it could have been and you adapt it to those to the you know method of communication so okay so please talk to us about some of the myth, uh, myths of uh, being an editor that everyone needs to understand for once there must be myths every career has some or the other myths the first myth is that we only uh, we only fix grammar that is a myth we don't uh, editors are responsible for making sure your facts are correct your spellings are correct um that you have cited sources for wherever information has been provided we are also responsible sometimes for changing the plot of a fiction manuscript where we feel that it's not you know fitting right we are also responsible for making sure your plot is flowing correctly like your dadi can't like in your manuscript you know your grandmother can't uh, be in kanpur and then by chapter 4 without any travel she can't suddenly be in delhi so that consistency in plot is something we ensure if the writer has you know forgotten about it which can happen because you're so immersed in the novel it's also our job to effectively communicate to the writer what needs to be brushed up and what needs to be improved to elevate the standard of writing so like i said it's not a it's not a job that you do singly you work in very close quarters with the author to make sure that they have support they have to the support they need to make their writing even better and uh, what's another myth mm actually i really haven't come across people who have told me what they perceived my job to be uh yeah do you have any myths i had this myth you... only that uh, uh the editors they uh, like you said they correct the grammars and everything and apart from that i had this myth that uh, they are the i i came across some of them that uh, they are very rude to the authors i don't know why so uh, some of my uh, like brothers and sister they are authors and uh, they had this uh, experience that uh, when we go to an editor and they are very you know uh, uh, dis uh, they disrespect you sometimes uh, when you are writing as a budding writer when you are totally new in this field and uh, they just tell you that you are not good enough you cannot come here you have to try more and stuff like that so is it really very common in, in your field that uh, um, editors uh, do treat uh, uh, writers like this or i it's, would it's just a matter to think that any of my friends and colleagues were like that i mean uh, i'm really sorry that uh, people you know have been through this experience and even people otherwise who may have been through this but i assure you that editors from traditional publishing houses and uh, the ones so our philosophy is that our our entire business is built on the workmanship of the author so for us authors like you know how in, in india we say atithi devo bhava for us it's like authors devo bhava basically <laughs> and uh, whether you're a budding writer or you're an established one everybody deserves basic courtesy and basic respect 
and i'm really sorry if there are editors out there who are not fulfilling this very basic human requirement so that just means they're bad people it doesn't mean that that's how editors are so that's actually good because like they had a bad experience i hope they have a good experience in life and any, any other person yeah the uh, rejected authors also who have now been so successful because of some of uh, some of their friends only right so yeah so i hope they have yeah, a good exactly. experience in life right yeah so books and podcasts that helped you learn something or cope up with the situation which is your favorite go to book or podcast you would recommend anyone so i don't have a go to book anymore i used to a few years ago now i i'm obsessed with reading as many new books as possible uh but a few books i would recommend in the context of what we're talking is one would be jayer's english it's a very good book by benjamin jayer who was the chief of copy at penguin random house for many many years i think for decades and his book is an excellent primer to understand grammar with nuance so it's not just a school level understanding of you know uh, there versus there versus there we're actually genuinely through examples and through wit to be able to understand grammar is that book and i keep it on my desk it's right here another book i would suggest is um there's this book by uh, brian dillon which is called suppose the sentence where he examines about 20 different sentences written throughout literature and provides you with the context as well as what made that sentence stand out so that's another lateral way of learning the beauty of language which i would sincerely recommend that everybody read then there is bird by bird by what's her name and lamot i think that's another brilliant book to understand the nuances of grammar and to also understand writing as a marathon not as a sprint because writing is very very exhausting and lonely so you need to be able to pace yourself you need to be able to have a distance from your writing to be self aware and she has a very empathetic way of speaking to authors and creative writers to tell them that this is a process worth going through so i would recommend that uh podcast my personal favorites are uh, malcolm gladwell's revisionist history uh i that's just a guilty pleasure i love listening to it and those are episodes i can listen to again and again because he does some excellent research in those now if you're talking about a book podcast um just one second there's a podcast started by this indian author her name's jenny bhat she is fantastic i would recommend that you read her books she started this podcast called desi books which if you're interested in understanding indian literature indian publishing and knowing more about just new books in the you know desi market um desi books is a great podcast to listen to she has amazing guests and um, you learn a lot through her yeah. this is stick yeah. on my checklist like book list i have i will do one more ha the name isn't coming to me just one okay. second i will just check sure. that 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 podcast is called between the covers it's by david namon and again it's beautiful podcast between the covers basically means he usually talks about one book per episode and again it's a great way of learning how to even talk about books because often we stumble when we're trying to explain why a certain book meant a lot to us we fall short of the right kind of vocabulary and it's a good way of hearing other people to then you know through symbiosis basically absorb all those great adjectives and verbs to be able to better express your own self yeah so we have reached to the last round that is the rapid fire round so i'll be asking you questions and you have to answer me fat fat okay okay so, done, okay done. done so ready okay so the I first mean, yeah. question <laughs> your favorite author ian mckeven so your favorite quote it's this quote by margaret atwood she says a word after a word after a word is power Oh god that is good one so i, I have it in my save these in my notes i don't remember them though <laughs> by heart it's okay it's totally okay. 
so past time apart from reading or writing uh, i learned french in the evenings i like to go on long walks while listening to audio books or a podcast and i love to dance on um, the latest punjabi music <laughs> that's a go to okay piece of advice piece of advice if you're feeling stuck wherever you are whether it's a job or an educational degree or the wrong stream don't you know don't fuss over the fact that you're in the wrong place do it well no matter what you're doing and have a plan with the next few steps in mind don't just think of the larger goal break it down into smaller achievable steps so that you can reach your goal in a time frame that is suitable for you and uh, if you're doing a so if you're doing a degree which you feel like it's the wrong fit don't mess it up by getting bad grades you paid good money for it i mean at least your parents have and you should fully take in that knowledge as well because knowledge never goes waste totally so a uh, moment of uh, from your career journey so far best moment best moment okay um so back in i think 2018 or mm-hmm. 17 was i it, we had a sales conference at harper collins and um while during the ceremony was going on everybody was having drinks and dinner they announced that there was going to be the surprise awards and um, i was one of the first people to win an award for being you know a, re- a rising star and i was so taken aback that first of all this was like kept completely under wraps from us only the senior executives knew about this mm-hmm. and that win was genuinely like oh my god thank you so i felt really appreciated it bolstered my confidence and uh, i also got a cash prize which i promptly went and spent on <laughs> makeup so fun yeah uh, so you like That's makeup nice and everything That's actually good, na. You feel accomplished. Uh, you feel acknowledged. Yeah, of it just was a very nice talent. surprise. Yeah. yeah. Also, I because you know, a... I wasn't from the industry. I didn't have a lit background, and uh, I would often feel like like an imposter. So <laughs> to have my efforts acknowledged in the two years I was in the system felt really nice, and it felt like I could achieve what I wanted to achieve within the creative community. Because believe me, engineering tries to drive out. it becomes very technical so to be able to think in those directions yeah is important and it felt nice so we are actually done with all our questions and uh, so it was great having you on the board and uh, this is me signing off from how i got the job so we will be back with one more interview and it was great having shreya pun with us so if you could just uh, tell our viewers to like subscribe and comment on our page so that we get more you know uh, inspiration yes, to work hard yes. so so thank you so much for having me on here it was a wonderful conversation i had so much fun and if you're interested in knowing more about cool jobs how to get them and everything that is to do about jobs please do like share and subscribe to how i got this job and it's a wonderful community be a part of it thank you thank you so much so thank you